In this video we will build a procedural concrete shader. For this we will first build a realistic base surface, then create dynamic weathering effects using procedural methods and finally add surface details such as chipped off edges and other imperfections. So in this video we're going to be building a procedural concrete shader which you can apply to any kind of objects in your scene and it has certain kind of features like for example this kind of automatic dirt effects which all accumulate in the correct areas. We have these kind of like chipped off edges in here. We have these streaking dirt lines here that are running down from the top. Let's also check out this more close up view in here. As you can see we have these kind of like chipped off edges effects in here. And as said, everything is done in a procedural way so that you don't need to do any of this by hand placing any kind of UVs or building some special textures for that. You just build this shader and then you can apply it to any kind of object that needs a concrete material in your scene. You will always get a kind of believable result. As usual, if you want to use the same scene files which I did, you can find them always on my Patreon together with all of my other scene files for all of my other tutorials. Additionally, you can find a lot of bonus content and even a whole course on car rendering. So head on over there if that's interesting for you. But now without any further ado, let's jump into our material editor so that we can build this kind of shader here from scratch. So now we're in the material editor and here you can see the finished shader and I just created a completely new Vera material here from scratch. Let's just apply this here to our object. And as you can see now everything is removed. We just start from this very basic gray material in here. And if you watch some of my previous tutorials, you know that I like to work with composite maps. So let's just add a simple composite map so we can layer a bunch of different textures on top of each other. Let's connect this into the diffuse map. And then let's add our first V-Ray bitmap in here. And I have a bunch of different textures here prepared. Let's use this diffuse map for this concrete patch in here. And as you can see, we have some kind of issues. For example, we have this very visible stretching that's going on in here and here. And that's because there have been no real UVs applied here to this object. And that's what we're gonna first fix in the first step. So let's go inside here and add a new V-Ray triplanar texture in here. And then once we do this, we can choose a different kind of scaling, for example, like 300. And once we do this, we can see that all of our stretching here has disappeared. We have some nice subtle texture applied to here. And I think we can use this as a first step. If we want to further randomize here the appearance of a texture so that it doesn't look very repetitive, we can also use a random texture offset in here. And as a last step, go into our mapping source and add a V-Ray UVW randomizer, which allows us to further randomize the placement of our texture. Let's select this in here. And then we can use stochastic tiling. Once we do this, you can see that now in some of those parts here, the texture is being rotated. That's not really what we want in this case. So let's use a UV rotation between zero and zero so that we have the same kind of alignment of the texture on everywhere. But what we want to do is to have a randomized scaling between let's say 50 and 150. And then in some of those parts here, the texture is bigger and some of them is a little bit smaller. And we just further get a more randomized effect. Additionally, we have this U and V offset between zero and one. And like this, you shouldn't be able to see any kind of repetitions anymore, even on bigger surfaces like this part here on the side, for example, there shouldn't be any kind of obvious repetition here happening. So far we have this texture here applied that is responsible for some high frequency details, but we want to add a second layer in here now. And then let's also add a new V-Ray bitmap. And let's load this different texture map in here. Once we do this, we can see we have the same kind of issues like what we had before, but we can now link as well the triplanar texture into our mapping source. Once we do this, we can see those problems here disappear. We also use the same UVW randomizer in order to randomize the appearance here of our texture. Now you can see this texture here has some bigger variations. And what we want to do now is to try to blend these different textures here together. For example, let's use a value of 75. You can see both of them now are blending together. For this, for me, it appears a little bit too dirty still. Let's use a value of 40, for example. 
And like this, we're breaking up our high frequency details with these kind of like bigger splotches of dirt and variations and overall just generate a much more interesting surface. So now that we have our base surface set up, let's start with our procedural effects. And for this, I first want to build this kind of like streaky effect that some kind of dirt is running down from these areas in here. And for this, let's add a new layer and let's put a new V-Ray color in here. And let's just give this a kind of like reddish color just that we know exactly where we would place these kind of effects. And now we of course need to mask this color in here. And for this, we're gonna use a V-Ray dirt texture. Let's move both of those here down. And then let's go into our dirt and let's flip these two different colors so that our occluded color would be white. And that's what we want for a mask. And now you can see we have these kind of like reddish parts that are building up here in these kind of creases. And at the moment, it's not very visible. So the easiest way to kind of make it more obvious is to add a new V-Ray color here in the occluded color. And then let's go inside and put the color here to white. And then also additionally raise this multiplier, for example, to a value of five. Once we do this, you can see that now here, the effect is much more visible. It's much more prominent and we can better see what's going on. We can now start to raise here our radius, for example, to a value of 50. You can see that now more parts here are being masked. Let's raise it to, for example, 75. And now we can play with our bias to define where this kind of dirt here is placed. At the moment, it's placed everywhere evenly, but let's try to use the Z bias in here at the value of 0.9, for example. And then once we do this, we can see that now we have much more bias towards the down facing areas like here. And I think that's more what we want because we want to add these kind of like streaking effects in those kind of parts in here. So at the moment it doesn't look like much, but let's add a new V-Ray bitmap. Let's load this dirt texture in here. And then let's place this dirt texture into the radius of our occlusion. And then once you do this, you can see that now we have a much nicer, much more interesting result in here. And let's go in and raise the radius, for example, to a value of 150. You can see that those streaks are now getting bigger. And I think like this is already quite nice. There's still some problematic areas like these parts here are stretched and some parts here don't have any textures at all. But this we can also just easily fix by just using our triplanar texture and then just applying this into the mapping source here of our texture. Now you can see we have this kind of like textures everywhere. We don't have this kind of stretching that's going on in here anymore. And everything like this now I think looks already quite good. So now of course we don't want to have this kind of reddish color. Let's add this kind of like brownish, darkish color in here. And once I do this, you can see the effect now is of course extremely strong. Let's go into our composite and then let's lower the value here to for example 50. And I think it's still too strong. Let's lower it to 25. Now we can see we have this kind of nice effect here where we have these kind of streaks here going down and it all blends quite nicely together with our base texture. So now I switch to a different view that we're able to better see the next steps. Let's just call this one here streaks. So we know better that this one here is our streaks layer. Let's add a new one. And then let's call this one here dirt, for example. And in this, I want to generate some dirt here around the edges of our models. So for this, let's duplicate all of the nodes we generated earlier. Let's change here the V-Ray color to completely red again. Let's put the radius back to 10, the default value. And now let's connect here our red color into our new layer. Everything will turn red again, of course. And then we're also gonna connect this one into the mask. Now we have very similar starting position like what we had before, but we're gonna change something. We're gonna go inside 
and switch this mode from ambient occlusion to inner occlusion. Now, once we do this, you can see that now we have these edges here masked out. At the moment, the texture is not really what I want. So let's use a different texture. Let's use, for example, this texture in here. So we don't have this kind of streaky effects. And let's also go in and remove this bias again so that everything here is basically placed evenly across the surface. And now you can see we have this kind of interesting dirt effect that's happening here on the edges. And now we just need to switch here to a different color, for example, black, and go into our composite and then blend this, for example, a value of 50. It is definitely still too strong. Let's use a value of 20, have it a little bit more subtle. But you can see that now we have this kind of like dirt, which is blending here together on the edges. And it just makes the whole thing look a lot more realistic and believable compared to before. So now I cleaned up the layer graph a little bit so that we have a bit more space to work with. So here we have our base texture. Here we have our streaks and here we have our additional dirt. And now I want to add an extra layer here to pronounce these edges a little bit to make them a little bit brighter. For this, let's add a new layer in here. So for this, again, let's duplicate those nodes in here, move them down and then use here again a red color so that we can clearly see what we're doing. And now let's connect this one into this new layer and then this one here into the mask. Now we have the same starting point like what we had here for our dirt, but we wanna do some changes. Let's use a higher multiplier because I want even more contrast. And then let's choose a different radius. Let's choose a radius of four, for example. So we just have smaller selection here on the edges. And because I want to have even more contrast, let's use a distribution of negative five. You can see that we have some very, very strong contrast now that's happening here on the edges. And some edges I don't really want to select, for example, this one in here. And this I can easily do by enabling this consider same object only option. So once I do this, then basically every object is treated individually and we don't have edges that are selected between different objects, if that makes sense. So now we can play here with our radius, make it even smaller. But I think I will leave it at four for now. And then let's choose here a different mode. Let's use a temperature mode and let's use, for example, 5,500 as a temperature to have slightly warmish color. And now we can blend this, for example, a value of 20, probably still gonna be too strong. Let's use a value of 10 or a value of five in order to have it subtly in there so that we have these kind of like pronounced edges a little bit and it's blending together with the dirt below it. And I think like this, it looks quite nice and quite realistic. And yeah, I think like this, we're done for our base surface. And now the only thing we have to do is to add some reflection here to our material. And then most importantly, to add some kind of nice bump mapping effects, because at the moment here, our object is completely flat. You can see the normals. They don't have any interesting bump details and so on. And again, as I said, the reflection and specular is also completely black for this material. So that's what we're gonna change now in the next step. So let's first add some reflection. And for this, let's increase here our reflection color to white. You can see right now, of course, it looks horrible. Let's use a different glossiness. And because concrete is very rough, let's use a glossiness of 0.2. You can see now we have a lot of reflection that's been overlaid here. Let's reduce the IOR to a value of 1.3. Like this, it's already better, but it's very evenly. And we kind of losing our texture, which we did before. So for this, let's easily add here a simple color correction. And instead of using just this pure white color, let's use our composite, put this into this color correction map, reduce the saturation, and then let's play with some parameters. Let's first connect this into the reflection. You can see now it looks already different, but let's, for example, boost here the RGB to 250 and then put the gamma and contrast to 0.8. And now we have 
like some better reflections which are happening. You can see now there's also something here in the reflections. And we just easily used here our composite to generate a own reflection map. It's not perfect, but in most cases it works already quite good that you're breaking up the reflections quite nicely. And I think like this, you can use it definitely as a base. I feel now this part here is a bit too pronounced. Let's reduce the edges effect a little bit to let's say a value of three. So that we just have this slight brightening here on the edges. And now at the last step, we will add some bump maps here to our concrete so that we have these kind of nice, interesting chipped off effects here on the edges. And our surface looks in general, basically much more complex. So now in order to make a bump map, I also want to layer this with different textures on top of each other. So we also would need to have a composite and then connect this composite here into our bump map slot. And now let's start with the first layer and that would be a V-Ray edges texture. And the edges texture is responsible on how the edges here are shaded. And it tries to add this kind of rounded edges effect on there. By default, the value is 0.1 centimeter, which is very small for the scene. Let's increase this, for example, to a value of three. And you can see that the edges are getting rounded now. I think at the moment, of course, it's too strong. You can see that this here looks very round. But if you try to find the right value, you can get a much nicer effect. You don't have these kind of super sharp edges here anymore. And the light is wrapping a little bit around those edges, if that makes sense. So this one here would be our base. And now we want to add some general bump because at the moment our surface here is completely flat, which is not realistic for concrete, of course. So let's add two different layers in here. And then we're gonna use our base textures here Let's move them down or duplicate them rather. And let's switch the textures. For example, in this one here, we're gonna use the bump map here for our concrete one. And in this one here, we're gonna be using the bump map for the concrete two. And then let's put both of them in here. So this one would be our first layer. That's the base layer. You can see now we have already some nice bump effects here happening. So I think this looks already quite nice. And then let's add this one here on top as a second layer. And let's play with the intensity. You can see this one has a different effect. We have these kind of holes in here. And we can, for example, blend this together with the intensity of 50 with the previous layer. And now we have like both of those effects here blending together. So that's it for the overall surface and now we get to the most interesting or nice effect in my opinion which is the kind of chipped edges here and for this we will add a third layer and then let's duplicate another texture in here and let's choose for example this bump map let's apply this here on top of everything so you can see how this bump map here looks like and you can see you have this kind of like smaller frequency details in here and now we only want to apply these kind of details here on our edges. And for this, we can use our mask that we generated earlier in order to place here this bright highlight on the edge. We're gonna use this mask as well, also for this layer. So let's put this here into the mask. And now you can see that this effect here is only applied on the edges. It is way too strong, of course, so let's reduce this, for example, value of 50 or a value of 25. And I think now it's blending together nicely. You can see that now this edge here doesn't look like it's completely straight anymore. We have this kind of like nice broken up patches here and the surface overall just looks way more interesting, way more complex. And overall, it works very, very good in my opinion. So here you can see our finished shader and let's break it down. We first built some kind of base surface and then we added some procedural dirt effects in here. We brightened up some of the edges in here to make it look more weathered or more exposed to the elements. And then also added some kind of interesting bump details like those chipped off edges 
and overall some bump on the general surface here itself. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. If you watch this tutorial until here, I'm quite sure you will find a lot of interesting stuff on my Patreon. You can also download all of my scene files and the whole course on car rendering and a lot of bonus content over there. So head on over there if that's interesting for you. Other than that, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.